In this recording, we shall look at proving identities involving hyperbolic functions. And the functions we shall look at are cosh x, which by definition is a half times e to the x plus e to the negative x, and shine x equals a half times e to the x minus e to the negative x. And if we want to prove various hyperbolic identities, it is often useful to use these two definitions. For instance, suppose we wanted to prove that cosh of negative x is in fact equal to cosh x. And what we should do is start with one side of the equation. I'd usually start with the one that looks most complicated because that will allow us the most manipulation to try to simplify it to look like the other side of the equation. So. In this case, the left-hand side, cosh of negative x, looks slightly more complicated than the right-hand side, cosh of x. And a good way to set out the proof is to write down the side of the equation we're going to start with. So LHS for left-hand side equals cosh of negative x. Then, in this case, we can apply our formula here to see what cosh of negative x is. And cosh of negative x means that the argument of this function will be negative x. So that that will become a half e to the power of negative x plus e to the power of negative negative x. So putting in negative x everywhere for the argument of this function. How can we simplify that? Well, that just becomes a half e to the negative x plus e to the negative of negative x will be just e to the positive x. And if we want, we could just swap those two terms there. Look at that. A half e to the x plus e to the negative x. That is indeed just the definition of cosh x. That is that is in fact the right hand side of the equation. So since we have shown the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, we have indeed proved that cosh of negative x is indeed equal to cosh x. So let's look at a second example that requires just slightly more algebraic manipulation, proving that shine of u plus v is equal to cosh u times shine v plus shine u times cosh v. Which side shall we start with here? The right hand side looks more complicated, as if that will allow us more manipulation. So let's start with the right hand side. So writing that out again, cosh u shine v plus shine of u cosh of v. And again, using our definitions, cosh of u will become a half e to the u plus e to the negative u. Shine of v will be a half e to the v minus e to the negative v plus shine of u. So that will be a half e to the u minus e to the negative u. And cosh of v will be a half e to the v plus e to the negative v. So that's writing out the right hand side. How can we simplify this? Well, when we see bracketed expressions, it will be good to take all constant numbers out the front, and multiply them together, and to expand the terms inside the brackets. So a half times a half is a quarter, and then expanding the terms in the brackets, the first one here, that will be e to the u times e to the v. We then have a minus e to the u times e to the negative v, multiplying those ones. We then have plus e to the negative u times e to the v. And we also have minus e to the negative u times e to the negative v. As we said, that's all multiplied by a quarter. Then using a similar principle on this second set, again, a half times a half is a quarter. And again, we get an e to the u times e to the v. We get an e to the u times e to the negative v. 
we get minus e to the negative u times e to the v and lastly minus e to the negative u times e to the negative v. So expanding this out a bit more, everything, each term is multiplied by a quarter and we can use our index law here that e to the a times e to the b is e to the a plus b. So that will become a quarter e to the u times e to the v for instance will become e to the u plus v. Then that next term minus e to the u plus negative v which is e to the u minus v continuing on in the same way e to the negative u plus v minus e to the negative u plus negative v and using the same logic on the next line it becomes plus a quarter e to the u plus v plus e to the u minus v minus e to the negative u plus v minus e to the negative u minus v and even before we expand the bracket since everything is multiplied by a quarter there's clearly going to be some cancelling because this bracket includes a negative e to the u minus v and that one includes positive e to the u minus v. So a quarter e to the u minus v minus a quarter e to the u minus v. And similarly there's a negative and positive there for the e to the negative u plus v terms. What will that leave us with? Well, it's going to leave us with these, a quarter e to the u plus v plus a quarter e to the u plus v. And it's also going to leave us with negative a quarter e to the u mi negative u minus v minus a quarter e to the negative u minus v. So let's write it out just to see that clearly. A quarter e to the u plus v plus another quarter e to the u plus v minus a quarter e to the negative u minus v and then down here another minus a quarter e to the negative u minus v. So a quarter plus a quarter is we've got a half e to the u plus v. Negative a quarter minus a quarter minus a half e to the negative u minus v. So this is starting to look a little better. We could take the half out as a common factor. So we have a half e to the u plus v minus e to the negative u minus v. At this stage it's probably worth looking back at what we're actually trying to find. We're actually trying to prove that this is the left hand side of the original expression which was shine of u plus v. So it might even help to think a bit about what shine of u plus v would look like. And shine of x generally is a half e to the x, so here that would be a half e to the u plus v minus e to the negative x, so here that would be minus e to the negative u plus v. So is what we've got looking like that, certainly that first bit does half out the front, e to the u plus v, but rather than having e to the negative times u plus v, instead of having that our expression our second term is e to the negative u minus v. But wait a minute, that's actually the same thing, isn't it? If we were to just do the following, write the first term the same, but then take a negative out the front there, in fact it is what we're after. It is indeed a half e to the u plus v minus e to the negative of u plus v which is indeed what we were looking for, that indeed is shine of u plus v which was the left hand side of what we started with. Therefore we have in fact proved what we wanted to prove, that shine of u plus v equals cos u shine v plus shine u cos v. So those are two examples of the general principle of proving such identities.